Hi everyone, it's Shanna McElheron with uh, Shanna's Creation Station and I wanted to spend some time today going through what do you do when you get a bunch of stamps and you're kind of new and you get all these really cool things and it might be a little bit overwhelming. So I want to spend some time just sharing ideas about what to do then when you get all these cool 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 things so i'm gonna make sure we're live on facebook i think so yep i see it so hello hello happy friday eve <laughs> so i just got inside from walking my dogs and i thought it was gonna be really nice and it's cold it was just cold so i kind of cut those walks short and thought nope <laughs> I just want to come inside and warm up a bit. Well, I do have some customers that are you guys who've bought some things and are really kind of new to stamping up. I started stamping up about a year ago, I think the 15th of February I started. And when I was when I started, I've got a few stamps, I had some ink, I had some paper that I've gotten over the years. So a bit of this and a bit of that. Um, but as I got into it, I, I was like, wow, what do I do with all these things? They're all so cool, but I don't know quite where to go from there. So let's just get down to the basics. Right now, we have a big catalog of items that runs through April of 2022. And we have a sale catalog that goes until June of 2022. And this is Celebration, which will end at the end of the month. So those are our three catalogs that we have going on right now. So in the mini catalog that most of you have gotten from me, and if you don't, let me know, and I can still send you one if you'd like, and you can take advantage of these awesome specials. But what will happen is you're going to see a lot of things that may coordinate with the seasons, um, the occasions that fall into this time of year. And then some of these really cool things will go into the next big catalog. So that's really fun to do. Now in the big catalog, there's going to be loads and loads of stamps that are awesome. And if you don't have one of these also, I can send that to you too if you'd like. But this will have Lots of good stamp sets, lots of die sets, all of the tools, it's everything. And it has all of the ink colors, all of the cardstock colors, everything that you would need. Now, all of these catalogs are available digitally too. So I could send you um, a digital copy if you know you have too many paper things around. <laughs> so. The first thing that I would do is say you had a, a bunch of stamps and things that you got new and I'm just going to pull a few here that I've, I've been making a lot of Valentine's. So I'm kind of tired of them, but I'll still get those out. A few things that perhaps you would start with. All right. So here are all your new goodies and you think, oh, well, I don't even know what to do with these things. So the first thing that I would do is look in your catalog for examples of cards that are made with your stamp sets and just spend a lot of time looking around. You can also look on Pinterest, but be careful because you can fall down that <laughs> the Pinterest hole and never come out and never make a single card. But if you look at some of these examples, you just can copy them. Just copy whatever you see to get going. And then once you start working with the stamps, then the ideas will start to roll into your head. And if they don't, then you just keep on doing what you see. Just copy what you see because you obviously like it. Well, for example, this set here, you can see there's a cool background card um, with these beautiful colors. So you can just try and make what you see there with the paper. Now another idea is just get your stamp and get some scratch paper. And maybe you just have black ink and that's fine too. That's how we start. We just get one color. 
um, maybe a couple of the others that might go with the designer series paper, anything like that. So I would suggest just getting your stamp and actually take each stamp and just stamp it on scratch paper to see what it does. And I do have a dog hair on there, oh dear. But that is the best way to kind of get to playing with them and see what they do. So here's our little bird friend. And hopefully I got enough ink on there. If I didn't, well, then I will learn that. Oh, isn't that great? So you can also, when you're starting out, you can get a lot of markers. And I have to show you my, I have this cute cup that has my kids when they're very little on there. And this is my marker cup. And I have another marker cup. <laughs> I haven't got into the storage part of stamping up yet, but eventually I hope to earn those really cool organizers. But until that day, I will just go ahead and use my cups. But then, yes, you can color these, experiment with the different colors that Stamping Up has. It is the best way to do it. And I'll clean that off with my chamois really quick. And then we'll do a couple more. But that's... That's very helpful. You know, just use scrap paper that you have laying around. Don't you know, waste your good stuff yet <laughs> on just plain. But these are fun to just take out and get going on this one. And hopefully your ideas will just start to fire up. And even stamp off a few to see if you like that image. Maybe when you make some some cards you would like to have a darker image and then lighter ones you can actually make your own paper that way i mean these beautiful beautiful papers that we can buy you can try to make your own like this this really cool paper and you could actually take these stamps and make your own paper if you don't have you maybe you haven't acquired a lot of paper yet go ahead and use your stamps to make the backgrounds of your card that's the best thing and then also just start sending cards to your family and friends just start playing with it don't worry so much about it is it you know, going to be beautiful are they going to like it just start doing and then as you're looking at other people's cards, you'll start to get more ideas. You'll start to want to find out more about how to do layers or how to do embossing, things like that. Let's just do one more here. This is a really cool set. My, I know my sister got this set and she's newer to stamping. So hopefully she can grab some ideas here and get to stamping some things. Now you don't have to make just cards. You can make home decor items. You can do anything. You know, just don't feel that that's your only thing. You can also scrapbook. Uh, goodness, who doesn't need to do that? <laughs> I do. Um, you can make packaging for gifts. You can make tags. You can, you can just, the sky is the limit. Put this one back here. There we go. This set is part of the celebration. You can earn this and the beautiful paper that matches it um, with a $100 order until the end of February. So I'm not sure I have the paper sitting right here, so <laughs> I'm not going to get that one out. Um, also, you may wonder about dies and embossing folders. So the difference is the dies cut the paper <clears throat> excuse me, and the embossing folders will make a texture onto the paper. So let's grab our machine and show you that. It's always a little bit close to the camera when I get this out. <laughs> so it's, it's like it's sitting right in your face. So here's our embosser, which I love to pieces. It was a little dusty. It, it has been working hard these last few days. Um, so here it is. This is the big one. It opens like this. And sorry, the camera's shaking. And then you get plates that go with it. All right, grab my plates here to run these through. 
Okay, now some of you might have different machines and you might have to play around with your plates to see if they're gonna work with the Stampin', Stampin' Up! dies and things. But on the main plates, they will tell you what, what plates to use in what situation. So here you can see your sandwich that you make. So always follow that if you're not for sure. I am going to just cut out a piece here, something just to show you that. Make sure I get everything out of the way. I'm so staticky. Everything is sticking to me. If you were going to get dyes to start with, some really good ones that I would suggest doing would be, oh, let's see here, the scallop contours dies because these will make really cool layers for your cards. I'll cut a couple of those. Another really great one are the layering circles because if you don't have too much, these will make a really awesome card. Now, the other day I was working with this set, which is called the palm dies. So I was making beach cards and I used this tree right here, this palm tree, um, to make a silhouette kind of a look. Oh, so, so beautiful. All right, so let's just take the scalloped contours and show you what I mean when I say you can make layers. So I have, I have started doing this and it really has been helping me. I get my dye and it comes in a plastic thing uh, over this harder plastic case. And I just take that off and I turn the whole package around so the words are by the flap and it has our order number and the official name of it. And then I have the dies in the front so that I can see them. That just seems to be working well for me. And then I write with uh, permanent Sharpie what it's called. Boy, and that has really made a difference in all of my dies. I can just quickly see, oh yeah, that's, that's the one. That's the one I need. And this set I've used so many times. This big one is perfect to use as a layer for a card. And when I say a layer for a card, let me grab one to show you. one now well, this is a very simple one that I made in our class that we had but you can see this is the card base and you could just make a card with that but then I added a layer with this designer series paper and then a sentiment so this I've I started out and I didn't use too many layers I mostly was just using the cardstock so then I I discovered a lot of other people doing a lot of things. And let me grab another example. Whoops. Go. This one actually has the scallop contour. I cut this out with it in the bingo class, or the, sorry, the kit class that we just had. Now this is a card that one of my stamping friends made. And her name is Vicky. She does a really good job. So you can kind of see this card has... So it's made a little bit differently than the traditional one. It was, it was cut the long way of, of cardstock and then glued down under here. A little bit of designer series paper glued to this part with a bow. And then she has, she has one, two, three layers on there and then the little van. So that kind of, that is kind of what I'm saying when I say <laughs> layers, but it just makes such a difference in your card making. And then she put a white layer on the inside to be able to write on a darker card. I have seen some people use printer paper instead of cardstock when you know you can do that if you're making a ton of cards just to save a bit um when you're rather than using your really good very thicker much thicker cardstock um you can do that it's okay it's your card you can do what you want so that is what we're talking about when we say layers and also on Pinterest you can google or search <laughs> search on Pinterest different folds and different layouts for cards. So that's a lot of fun. And you can make a sample and maybe label it. This is, you know, blah, blah, blah type of a, 
uh, layout. And if you really like that one, just save that in a folder so that you can go back to that another time. So that's really fun. Okay, so I have a stack sitting to the left of my, of my screen where I have just pieces that are single pieces that will be good to cut for layers. And then I also have a bunch of pieces that are ready to be scored to be made into cards just sitting next to my my work area here so some of them are scored some are not but they're all cut and ready to go so that way I can just grab my stuff if I have an idea and get to get to making the card really fast it took a while for me to get a lot of cardstock built up I would just gradually buy it you don't have to get everything all at once of course so always remember that you know just take it easy on it try and and just do this as you're going along here's one of these the contour um, layers cut so I could put that on top of a piece of cardstock and then I have one layer and then you can add more layer you can add designer series paper too so that's, let's cut one of these just so you can see it. Let's see, I'm trying to think if I'm going to make any cards. If I want to use, I'll use this Coastal Cabana color, I think. So then I'll have that ready for when I'm, I'm wanting to make a card. Now you might notice in here that there are pieces of actually this designer series paper that were stuck in my die from the last time so i can get my take your pick tool the handiest thing in the world and there's lots of things that you can use to do this but i kind of like to do this and then you just are going to poke these out and everything's very static key here so everything's like sticking to my my uh tray there but that way you'll know you want to check that before you run it through because Otherwise, you might not get as good of a cut. It seems to work okay, though. All right, those are all out, I think. There's a lot of those. Okay, so then we can go ahead and just run this through so you can see again how the stamp and cut and emboss machine works. So I have my layer three, and it does look like this. It comes to you beautiful and clear and nothing marked up at all. But as you get to working on it, you will see all the, the colors. You can get a little brush thing to wash this off. Um, I don't have that yet. That's another thing that I need to get. So it is kind of a process. And then you put your paper down and your die. And then that is followed by another number three acrylic plate. And you can buy these separately. So if you have... Um, sometimes they get a little funky, like you can see this one is a little misshapen and that's from just going through the machine, uh, maybe the same one over and over. So I try to switch them in different orders. It's kind of like flipping your mattress where you want to make sure equal time on either side. But yes, I do have a backup set that I recently got just in case and that way I can, in case anything happens to my original plates, I can still keep crafting. Oops, I gotta turn this, the handle is awkward for me with this phone holder here. Let's try that again. You can also get post-it notes or um, washi tape to hold your die down so that it doesn't move when you're running it through. So then I just turn the handle and it's gonna shake the camera a bit, sorry about that. And there we go. Roll it through, and then that cuts out all these really cool shapes and things. Ooh, that was a big pop. All right, so there we are. Oops, I bonked the phone. Hopefully I'm still on, I think so. <laughs> Facebook got confused there for a second. I think we're still good, okay. And there you go. I think that's the coolest thing ever. So then you can see when you take it off, most of the little doodads have popped out, but then you can go ahead and either use your finger or you take your pick tool, which is our favorite thing in the world. And now I have this beautiful coastal cabana, or maybe this is pool party um, color. And you just knock those little deals out. 
And hopefully, I'm gonna get one of those little vacuums that is for your desk that just sucks up all those little pieces, I think. I, I saw that someone had that. I thought that was really clever. So this would be super cool to put on the cardstock to add some, some dimension to your card. And then you can add stamps, you can do more die cutting, more shapes, you can do, you know, geez, the sky's the limit. So that layering is so fun. All right, so I'm gonna save that. And this piece is pretty small. Some people have used these pieces as a reverse thing. You could use it as a template. You could use this somehow on your card. Um, for a window kind of a thing. So sometimes you say these things. I'm not gonna say this one though, cause I'm not feeling that one. So I'm gonna get rid of that and right, recycle that. All right. So that is die cutting. And now let's just jump to uh, the embossing folder. I need to grab another plate, which is sitting over here. So let me grab that farther away. I thought it was all prepared, but I always forget one thing. So this is plate number four, and we use that when we're going to emboss. Uh, also, you can emboss with um, templates that we have. And templates are, it's a little plastic film that you, you can use blender brushes with to make patterns. Um, I have some here. Let me grab them. This is a, this is what I am meaning, but you can use these to make texture on our, um, with our stamp and cut and emboss machine. So there's a lot of things that you can do that are just a little bit different. That back. And then when we have an embossing folder, all right, so let's get this out of the way here. This back in because I don't want to lose it. I'll clean those dots out later. And I'll make sure I've, I've gotten so much better at put it away right after you use it because I did, I did lose a couple <laughs> when I was starting out. So I learned the hard way. Put these aside and get my embossing folder. Okay. And so this is a small one, so it'll do a little partial embossing. This is the Dotty Hearts folder, and there actually are two of them that came in this pack. I don't know if you can see that. And they make these, these textured patterns. So when you're getting your embossing folder, you read on here, and if it says that it's 3D, you need to look on your directions because on our sheet here, it has two different setups for our sandwich for a 3D embossing folder. You would just use number one and number four, which is that darker brown color. But for a regular standard embossing folder, you need number one and two of your number threes. So this is just regular. So we're gonna put one, we're gonna use one and our number three. So let me get one of these and a piece of paper to run that through. I'll use, I'll use this magenta color. So you can do this this way, or if you want to do a partial, which is fun to do too, just kind of line up your paper like that. And you want the fold to be going through the machine first. So let's put this on here and then run it through. I'm sorry if the phone shakes a little bit, it's not too bad. There we go, oops, bouncy, I bounced you. All right, and now when you take that off, a lot of static, you can see how cool the texture is, isn't that neat? So fun. I had a white one of these cut out for my Valentine's um, cards that I made this week. And then I took my blending brushes, which are these, 
and put that in ink and on the white piece of cardstock, you can add color to it. And that was really fun. So that's embossing versus die cutting, if you were wondering. <laughs> okay, so let's move this out of the way. And I, I'm gonna say this because I can use this another time and talk about cardstock and ink, I think now, because it's quite a large category. And usually I think people just wanna have all the colors because I know I do. <laughs> all right, put this over here. There we go. And let me grab my catalog real quickly. My big catalog, this is called the annual catalog or the big catalog if you want. So I have, um, thought I did anyway, let's see here. Here we go. So in our big catalog, what a beautiful picture. In here, you can see all of these all of our color collections. So this has what you can get in paper, ink pad, ink refills, and the stamp and blends, which are these right here. These do shading. So they'll come in a two pack of the colors and you're able to do shading as you're coloring. It has an alcohol content in there. It's really neat. It smells good. And these little markers, just so you know, these are called Stamp and Write. And these ones, the Stamp and Writes, you can actually color onto your stamps. So if you have a stamp like this, you can apply color to the stamp. Let me see. Here's, I have this one ready to go. So I did this um, with my beach stamp. So I could take this, and I think this is soft. I'll use jade. Jade's a little darker. Um, there's two ends. There's a thick end and a tiny pointier end. So I'm going to use the thicker one. And you can just go ahead and apply the ink this way to your stamp. Color it. And I did exactly this in a beachy card that I made. and Maybe you saw its picture. And get it on there best you can oops okay so again this is when you're starting up you try to use whatever you can now this is cinnamon cider use the wide end of that for the palm trees the tree part or bark I guess okay so I've applied the ink now to activate that ink, because it's just been sitting there for a moment, what you need to do is huff, huff on it. And that's super weird and strange, but that will, your, your breath, when you breathe on that, will activate the ink to, to go to the paper. Otherwise right now it's drying. So I just go like that, which is very gross and weird, but then we apply it to our paper. And then you get that. Isn't that neat? Wow, I think that's so cool. So there are ways to, you don't have to have everything right away. You can you know, pick a few favorites and you know, go from there. And see how nicely it cleans up? Perfect. Let's see, there's one little part of the tree that I'll make sure I get that off. There, perfect. Okay, and this is just water on my chamois that's taking that off. All right, so that that is that. Um, if you if you don't have much paper to start out, I would definitely get get basic white cardstock and basic black. Those are those are the best things to get you going. I don't have my black paper here. It's Ivy's using it for Valentine's. <laughs> So, but you definitely want to have this on hand all the time because most of your work is going to be done with that. Then, after you have a good, after a good pack of that, what I would do is get the assortment pack to kind of see if you like some of the colors. And the assortment pack is on the next page, I believe. 
Yes, the assortments and bundles. It's on page 126 if you're if you have a catalog. But they will sell eight and a half by eleven card stock uh, or twelve by twelve of the color assortments. And they'll say bright neutrals, regals, and subtles. So if you look back over to our color page, which is two over, they have all the colors broken down by those catalog or, or by those categories. So you can get two sheets of each of the colors in one of these packs. So for example, this is the neutral pack. You'll get two sheets of each, and I went for the eight, eight and a half by 11, of those, of that category, of the neutrals. So the neutrals were right here, and there are these color names going across. So then you can kind of see what colors you like to work with, and you'll have a real good variety if you get all of the color families. You could get one of each. And here's the regals. It seems that I really like to use those because that one's, there's not much left. You can get the brights. Uh, I guess I ran out of the others. So I have gone now that I've, I've done that where I had two each of these packs. Now I kind of know my colors that I like and I'll go ahead and get the full package of, of what I'm looking for. And also, when you get designer series paper, they will tell you what colors coordinate with, with the designer series paper. So you can be sure to have on hand colors that will match if you know you're going to buy a pack of designer series paper. Maybe you want to get coordinating cardstock at the same time. So again, very important on our designer series paper label. And these tiny little letters here are the colors that match this paper. So it coordinates. So you don't have to guess if the shade is going to match. You can see that. So that's very helpful. And I did that with my Valentine's this year. I had this pack of designer series paper and I'm almost out I think I just have a couple more sheets of it this is called the sweet talk and the sweet talk has the coordinating colors that go along with it so I use that for my ink and cardstock purchase when I was getting this this set so then I knew I could make all kinds of different cards and they're all going to coordinate so that's very very helpful I love that because you don't have to guess you're going to know what's going to work. But this paper is very good. I have started out and I had my share of paper from different arts and craft stores. And I thought, no, no worries. I'll just use all that up. I haven't used a single one of those from the stores. I, I just go with this. It's just so good. It's really good quality. Also in our assortment pack here. So yes, eight and a half by 11 or 12 by 12 if you want. I just tend to make a lot of cards in that, that size for eight and a half by 11. If you enjoy making the larger slimline cards a lot, I might get the 12 by 12 sheets. Um, yeah, you can just see what works best for you. Then you can get a stamping pad bundle, which will feature all of the categories of of these these color families i know they're having a little trouble filling those right now we're stamping up's really struggling with keeping the, everything coming in everything's selling out and then the new stuff hasn't arrived yet so please just bear with us it's it's gonna work out it will work out but you can get all of those colors in a big bundle. You can also get the ink refill bottles that when your stamp pad runs out of ink, it's a little squirt bottle. You can get those to fill those pads back up again. And then you can get the stamp and write markers, which are these, and they come in a pack of 10 in those color families too. So it's really fun to get a big hunk of those. That's a good thing to do. Now you will see there's a color family called In Colors. The In Colors are selected when a new catalog starts. And if we go back to our page here, it gets its own category. These colors most likely 
leave after the, the year. So you can see this little category of colors. It's going to be done when our new catalog starts in May. And these were the ones that we got to see in 2021. Um, there's usually five of those and they'll come in and go out. Usually they don't stick around too long. So they're just for the, the time frame of your catalog, but they're beautiful. This one, Pale Papaya, it's my favorite color in the world and polished pink, but Pale Papaya is such a cool color. I never thought I'd like that, but beautiful. Now I use a lot of basic white. You can also get vanilla if you like that color. I don't do too much vanilla. I just tend to keep to the, to the white for some reason. We'll see what you would do. This is Stampin' Storage over here. This is when you get a bunch of markers and pads. You can get a cool setup like this. And I haven't done that. I just stack mine um, in my craft room so I can see all my colors and it works out really well. Another thing that you can get are the little ink spots. Um, if you have ever gotten a kit, you can, let's see here. Here's our little, our, well, they're stamping spots. They're the tiny little bits of ink. So in a kit that has ink with it, you can get a bunch of colors that way. So when you're starting up, you can get the big, the big pack of that and I wanted to show you that years ago I got this I don't know what year this is let's see if it says here um, <laughs> doesn't say the the year that I can see it but these are the the bold bright stampin spots so I had gotten all of these colors and now I don't think oh real red is still in there um the other colors are not <laughs> but this is another way that you can acquire ink colors quickly um, where you can get just a collection of these and these still work I can ink those up I'm, all of them are good though because I didn't open some of them, so they're they're still good in there. But this is another option. And when you get a kit from the kit collection with Stampin' Up! when you're starting, the ones that have ink in them that usually are $19 will have a color. So you can build your collection of ink colors that way. The cheaper ones that are $12 or less expensive, um, they don't come with ink, so that's why they're a little less uh, money there for those. So that's something that you you can do to build up all of your supplies. All right, so let's see. What else do we have? Any other thing? Oh, there are colored pencils. There's uh, pastel chalk that you can do, and you can get all the markers too if you wanted, wanted to be all fancy like that. <laughs> so that's kind of neat. You can get uninked stamp spots these little guys, and then the ink refills come in little bottles like this, and you can get, you can get, um, you can make your own, actually, your own little set. Um, and then this is all the designer series paper that, that runs. Now, as you go to make your cards, you're going to need envelopes to send these, and you can get white or vanilla so if you're ordering envelopes make sure you get which one you want because they they do have basic white and very vanilla um there i usually get the basic white they come in a pack of 40 and they're nice they're just a bit sturdier than say if you bought them on amazon or something like that it it's a bit thicker so just keep that in mind but you can go and you can get I would say ribbon and trim was probably my last thing that I was thinking about getting. I made a lot of cards without that, and then I slowly started to acquire a few few things and the embellishments, and the rhinestones are just my favorite thing in the world. Now I'm kind of getting into sequins too. So for stamping, when you when you do stamp, you need to clean them. This is the chamois that is on page 145 that I use a lot. I also have this this number two. It's called the Stampin' Scrub. I'm not sure I have it sitting here. Yeah, I don't. 
I don't use that too much now because then you can you can use the stamp and mist also to clean your stamps but the chamois is very easy it's just very quick so I I use that and as you get going you may want to pick up a different size block now, in your kits you will get some that are like this size a little thinner like this size and then you can pick up different sizes that will fit your stamps and I find that the smaller ones are very nice. For the bigger stamps that you have, you can get a tool called the Stamparatus, which is on this page. And here's mine. You also can use this for if you're making a ton of the same card. So what you'll do is you'll put your stamp on this piece and your card here, and then you stamp down. And if you wish, you can then move your panel down and maybe you stamp again and then you'll have something stamped here 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 as you keep moving it down and it'll be exactly straight or if you're stamping something and you don't get enough ink on it the first time you can re-stamp it because it's it's going to be held with a magnet down here and this hasn't moved so then this can save you from having to get a whole bunch of acrylic blocks so keep that in mind. But, I mean, you get a couple blocks, and then if you have a really giant, giant stamp, you can get creative when you're starting out. You can try. Um, I have put it on a big stamp pad one time. Not going to lie. It was kind of, it works. It worked. Um, I, I've seen people, some people have used the phone, the back of their phone. So, you know, you, it's, it's a little cumbersome. You can also use a punch. You got to just stick it on there, but be careful. So there are creative ways, but eventually you're going to want to get something that won't give you any grief. All right. Okay. So I think that is about it. And you can look through these catalogs and just know you don't have to have everything all at once. Just, just build up slowly. And maybe you pick up something, um, maybe something new every month or so. And then uh, maybe you see something on Pinterest and you want to find what you need to make that. So that's possible to do that also. And here is the embossing folders. They're just the coolest things ever. So if you have any questions about that, um, just let me know. Because when we get a new catalog, like this little sale catalog, a lot of the times we forget about the big catalog. And there are so many great things in here. So that's very, very helpful to know. All right. So I think that is about all I wanted to cover, but I know I've got some newer newer people there. I don't want you to be overwhelmed. Just give me a holler if you have any questions. Um, hopefully tomorrow morning, I'm going to share some cards that we can make together and maybe give you some new ideas about what you can make with your new items. All right, so that's it for today. Have a good night. Bye-bye.